Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, faith can be a dirty word, but uh, when you're spreading the dirty gospel, maybe that's okay. And guess what? If you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And, you know, if you like how we do things around here, I am going to go out on a limb and assume that you do, because let's face it, you're listening. Uh, and if you are subscribed, hit that subscribe button, give us the old five-star rating on your podcast provider of choice. Smash that like button, do what you gotta do. Uh, we're available places, well, pretty much everywhere. Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, and plus we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on the social media. Uh, we're on the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, uh... Several other places. I, I'm losing track. There's so many. But we're right in the seats for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because guess what? If we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So do us that kindness and please pay us a visit. You know, sorry we've been a little intermittent lately, boys and girls, but uh, we're, we're getting back on our grind. It is that season, as it were, but uh, on this one we're back, and we are in full glory, talking a little bit about the Dirty Gospel. The Reverend is the name of the documentary, and it is available on the Criterion channel now. Uh, we had the unique pleasure of sitting down, talking not only with the director, but uh, the subject, the star, the one only, the Reverend. Vince Anderson, and this film is the winner of the Doc NYC Audience Award. It's it follows a got the gospel rock icon and activist, uh, Reverend uh, Vince Anderson, uh, and it's his story. And I mean, after he entered seminary, he dropped out to figure out his second calling, which was music. And with his uh, his band, the Love Choir, he uh, he has played a, a weekly show, free show, a legendary one for for well over twenty years now. Uh, finding a way to reconnect with his faith using uh, using the music, and it is a it is a beautiful, beautiful thing as we see him move the people, but also get involved with social justice and uh, so many other things. This is really a call to not doctrine, but more to spirituality and more to faith, which which at the end of the day is is something that I think is a beautiful thing. But like I said, we had the unique pleasure of sitting down with the filmmaker Nick Canfield and uh, the one only Reverend Vince and Anderson to talk about uh, the making of the film, the spreading of the dirty gospel, as they like to call it, and so very much more. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Honestly, enjoy that. Check out The Reverend, which is available on the Criterion channel now, but first enjoy our talk with Nick and Vince, because between us, it's a darn good one. All right, well, boys, I mean, just to kick this off officially, I mean, Nick, Vince, first off, just thank you so much for the time today. And, I mean, congrats on the film. I absolutely loved it. Oh, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Now, I mean, Nick, I guess my first question is for you. Like, walk me through sort of the early days of uh, of, of meeting this fantastic man and sort of deciding you want to follow him with the camera for a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a New Yorker. I, I grew up here, but I never ha I hadn't heard of Vince through his earliest stages. And then, you know, a friend of mine brought me to see him. Um, this is probably, you know, 2015 or or I guess I guess way earlier than that. That's when I started making the film. But I'd been seeing him perform for five or six years uh, and I was always blown away by his performances. But at a certain point, I was like, you know, clearly he's an interesting guy and I want to see what he's what he's like backstage and what else he does in his life. And, you know, he obviously has a real compassion for, for, for his audience and for music. And so um, I wanted to explore that. And, and he kindly, uh, after a little bit of coaxing agreed. Now, I mean, I guess the next question is for you, Vince. I mean, I can imagine there's always going to be a little trepidation when someone says, Hey, I want to follow you around with the camera. But I mean, what was it about Nick that made you want to say yes? Didn't want to <laughs> I didn't want to say yes at first. I mean, I had had some experiences with documentary filmmakers in the past that weren't so positive. Um, and uh, so I was 
a little hesitant about getting on that train again. Um, and uh, but Nick like would send me some films and maybe go to a screening of a film that he was uh, involved with, which I loved. And that was kind of and and really he just hung around enough for me to be like, well, I'm not getting rid of him, so I might as well say yes to him. <laughs> Documentary filmmaking by attrition, I love it. You, you gave up. I mean, that's that that's a, that's perfect. I mean, that makes sense, but. I've, I I gotta wonder. I mean, particularly for you, Vince. I mean, just given the shows that you play and just sort of the, the energy that there is. I mean, it makes sense that someone like Nick would want to come see you because I mean, again, like lively crowds. You're putting on a hell of a lively show. I mean, had you ever thought, even sort of before this, the just sort of I guess maybe sort of the cinematic qualities of what you did every week? Really interesting question because um, you know I. Li- I really live in this live world, right? You know, that's where the stage is where everything happens for me. So I've always had a little aversion to, um, and and to your point, that live thing is the cinematic, it's the whole experience. Right, yeah. Visual and the audio and everything together. Um, And then I would also add cinematically, spiritually, that's a word, emotionally, you know, all these other things are coming into it as well um and nick's film was the first piece of media media that i either heard or saw of um our thing that we do together that i thought got close to capturing it love it yeah. love it now nick i'm curious like was it hard to to get people together to sort of sit down and talk to this man like how long was this entire process of you like cobbling together footage to make this film. I mean, it was several years. I mean, I I would I was filming for about five years, um, and I come from that like observational cinema verite school. Well, I used to work for uh, Albert Maisel's, if you know the Maisel's brothers, yeah, who made course, yeah. Grey Gardens and Gimme Shelter and all that. So you know, you really have to just be there and yeah. come in without a, an agenda for what the story is. So it required a lot of. I knew it was going to be a long haul. I maybe I didn't know it was going to be that long, but. Yeah, there's a lot of there's hundreds of hours of footage and you just have to be there. And I was there in a lot of shows and I was there with Vince doing a lot of other things that he that he did. And and it was it took a little while, I think. And that's part of the reason why that works. It, it takes a little while for you to really get comfortable with somebody with a camera there. And, you know, so that took even that really took, I would say, like a year, a year and a half. And um, and then um, and then I, I we recorded a lot of um the, the shows with with multiple cameras i bring in other camera operators to help me um so we can really capture the the show like that and um I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we got well absolutely and i mean something i really enjoyed about the film and i mean i love what you just said about you know working for the mazels and not coming in with an agenda and i mean to me that's the most important part of this film because i mean i'm a firm believer in spirituality but I don't necessarily want to be hit over the head with any kind of sort of dogmatic doctrine. You know what I mean? And yeah. I mean, it, w- it was really important to me just to see this sort of play out in a very kind of organic way. And I mean, not just for you, Nick, but I mean, Vince as well. Can you talk to me a little bit about just wanting this to not be a forced message, just sort of a message if it, if it were, that's probably the best way to put it. Yeah. I mean, um, that's really important to me. And I think Nick, captured that because um you know i never try to make my shows um message oriented or overly preachy um but there there are times that that call me to to do that (laughs) you know there are times that something happens in the world that that i'm the one on stage and the one with the microphone so i've got to say something but for the most part you know it's this it's just this thing and um yeah I don't know if that answers the question or not. No, I mean, I think it does because it's one of those things where I can imagine there's going to be a little bit of push and pull between the both of you. I mean, I can imagine, you know, Nick would be filming something and be like, oh, wait, I can't use this because I'll never get the clearance rights for the song because you're covering somebody or that kind of thing. Like, how did you, What like, was there any kind of push and pull between the two of you as the film was being made? Or Nick, did you just manage to sort of lay out and let Vince do his thing? Well, I mean, I was kind of trying to lay out and let Vince do his thing, and I think he he let me do my thing. I mean, he, there wasn't actually a lot of pushback from him about, oh, don't shoot this, and I don't feel comfortable. To, I mean, there there's, I'm sure there are some things that he was a little bit nervous about, whether or not they would be in the film or or what have you. And 
but you know, he, he was still open about that stuff. You know what I mean? And I mean, I, I filmed him changing and, you know, being horribly sick and throwing up between sets and all kinds of, uh, all kinds of things. And, and also just quiet moments at home. And there's a lot of that great stuff that didn't make it in the film, but um, I don't think that he, he really um, pushed back too much on, on kind of letting me into his life, which is, which is why I think it feels so intimate. Well, and I mean, that moment where, you know, Vince gets proposed to, it's such a beautiful moment. I mean, did you know in advance or did, was that sort of a gorilla moment that just kind of happened? No, that I didn't know about it. And I wasn't there. That's somebody else who had captured that on their phone. I was pretty pissed off actually, that I, I was not there for that one. You know, I was putting in a lot of, I'm there for most shows. And of course, you know, I'm not there one week and that happens. No, I mean, I'm curious for both of you because, I mean, obviously, I mean, Vince, I've gotten to see you perform on the film, but I've never, I've never been part of a show. And I mean, for people who are sort of discovering sort of who you are and what you do for the first time, can you just lay out a little bit of, of what your show is about and just trying to sort of capture that essence to to audiences out there because i mean again like i said this isn't necessarily dogmatic this is just spiritual this is joy this is sort of being sort of in the moment and you know expressing joy which i mean to me this was a very joyous film yeah thanks for saying that i really feel that as well that that um and you know as far as what monday nights are and the show is um for me it's you know i call my music dirty gospel yeah. Uh, and that's also kind of my theology and philosophy that it all has to come from the earth. It all has to be kind of dirty and messy and muddy and just, you know, cause that's what life is, you know, also the soil, the earth, you know, the dirt, the dirtiness of it all, that's where life comes from. That's where the, the tulips pop out of the ground from, you know? So there's this, this thing of life and joy all around us already. Um, and for me, the gospel is that joy. And so not exclusive to what you believe or not, <laughs> like it's for everybody. Um, and I hope that that joy, that, pe that people can find their own joy at the shows. Um, and we try to make the shows these conversations between the band and the audience. You know, they really are these like, I never have a set list, right? try to like what does the audience need what, what do you want what do you want to hear you know and it's back and forth it really creates this col um, collaborative magical thing you know and and i'm i'm hoping that people can go away from the show kind of feeling refreshed or um re-energized or or just not or maybe you know just not alone well, and I mean, there's something about just sort of the pure joy of playing music as well. I mean, that moment with Questlove of just, you yeah. know, you know, you sort okay. of calling him up on the stage to come play drums. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's really quite literally a jam session that you do every Monday night. Yeah, for sure. And, and everybody, you know, that is an open stage for the most part. And um, these people come, rotate in and out and, you know, um, so th this, this joyful community of you know and for a lot of us it's a chance for musicians to kind of see each other you know people roll by after their gigs or um so it's it's you know joyful community now nick i'm curious because i mean at least especially in the early parts of the film i found it was so important to frame you know your talking head stuff with vince you know as like right next to him performing as well how important was it for you to really make his music a character very early on Super important. I mean, I actually set out to try to make an entirely observational film that didn't have any interviews in it at all. And I wanted to spend even more time like in on with him on stage and have a lot of it play out that way, because that's the way it really is. And I and I kind of learned that, you know, first of all, there's 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 sort of a, a retroactive looking part of Vince's story that I can't capture that I need people to help kind of investigate. And I also figured out that, you know, much as I might like to, most people aren't going to want to watch a, like a nonstop three hour concert like film of Vince's amazing music. I mean, he's got so many songs that are 15 minutes long. You could just have it be a lot of shows. And, and I think that that would be great, but you know, at, at a certain point, actually, you know, you need, you need that break from, from the, from the music and, sure. and going into the rest of his life and, and other things that he's doing. And so, um, I actually found that uh, it was surprising that you, I had to limit the amount of music that I wanted to include. <laughs> At the end of the day, Nick, do you feel like you've managed to sort of, I guess, spread, you know, appropriately spread the dirty gospel events? 
Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I hope so. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that it, Vince feels like it accurately represents, you know, a Monday night. And um, and I think, you know, this is this is the beauty of, of, of film as a medium is that we can, you know, Vince, it can't be everywhere at once, but, you know, the film can be. And so hopefully um, we get even more people who get uh, exposed to him that wouldn't otherwise, wouldn't otherwise, yeah. Vince, how do you feel about sort of being on this different platform? Because, I mean, again, having a, a residency for 20 years in one spot in New York is one thing, but now you're you're bringing your residency into into homes all across North America, basically. Yeah, which, which uh, yeah, feels, you know, weird um, on one level, but it also feels great that, that, that um, similar to what Nick was saying, this opportunity to take this little room, right, and share it with, with you know with a lot of people um and i'm hoping that it does translate for people and they get that um you know and yeah so um and as far as you know whatever whatever's next is next we'll see now i mean this is something i want both your perspectives on but i mean nick will go first uh obviously the moving image is a beautiful thing it's a great image it's a great thing for storytelling and also you can say the same thing about music but when you put them together like you have in this film, it, it hits a different level. And I mean, I'm kind of curious from your perspective, what is it about the marriage of the two that makes for such compelling storytelling? Uh, well, first of all, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know. There is definitely a, a certain special place for music documentaries that help you really capture it. I mean, I guess it's, it's the sense that it's the same thing that we get from being in a live show. I mean, like, you know, by, by most most live shows you go probably aren't going to sound as good or as pure as the recording studio you yeah. know record that you get but just the feeling the immediacy the 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 veracity of it being live and it, and and it coming straight into your ears you know has that feeling so when you see a, a music documentary i think it gives that same quality but we able we are able to kind of make it more cinematic than than just you standing in the audience and so um i think that's what it is but maybe vince has got another idea about what the feeling that it is that it's able to convey. Yeah, I would, I would add to that. There's something um, that Nick captured, not only with the sound and the stuff, but the, the look of the film um, feels a lot like my aesthetic, you know? Like, and so there's an invitation into this, to how I kind of see the world as well. Um, and I think that's a really interesting place for the audience to jump into. Um, no, absolutely. And I mean, just in seeing you perform, and I mean, this is, this might be a bit of a tired comparison, but I mean, I think it's accurate. Like seeing you perform also almost reminded me of Levon Helm in The Last Waltz, just sort of him really like throwing himself into the, into, in, into his music with such sort of physicality. And I mean, there's something about that that is so engaging as a viewer. And I mean, just to start putting a bow on this, I'm kind of curious because obviously Nick Vince, I mean, this film is now sort of going to, enter the pantheon of of, of uh, rock uh, music documentaries. I mean, is there anything that, you know, early on, I mean, especially for you, Nick, that maybe was sort of an influential piece that we like, damn, that got me into this, or I enjoyed that. Like, talk to me a little bit about sort of your birthing into sort of rock docs. Uh, I mean, I, I, The Last Waltz I was, is definitely a favorite of mine and, and an influence. I mean, there there is a, a Maisel's, film gimme shelter oh, of course about, yeah know, concert in altamont and so that's another that's another live concert film and so yeah i mean i started out kind of wanting to make a concert film and i've also seen some other smaller music documentaries it's one thing to make a music documentary about someone that is famous already which is the the vast majority of music docs people they have like have released many albums and have you know a large following already whereas vince is more like locally famous and so it's actually harder to kind of get people to care um so i've seen some other films including uh, one about another local musicians called satan and adam um they were street musicians and and i thought that um you know that was that was an opportunity for me to be like well that was a great film and, and 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 if people can care about these two random street musicians that no one's ever seen then i know i can make a film about vince that everyone will will, will really want to see so i don't know Sure. What about you, Vince? Yeah, I would say the, the the last waltz and um and and actually um uh to tomorrow fr fr Friday March first we're also releasing the soundtrack record um, on oh. all, on all platforms 
Um, Fantastic. And uh, a, a vinyl a pre-order will be available on Bandcamp as well tomorrow. But when we were putting that together, um, there's there's studio and live stuff on that soundtrack album. And it was, uh, um, I really liked, it, that was inspired by the Last Walt soundtrack um, and what they did with the state with singers and stuff. And then I would just add my other uh, kind of music doc inspiration. Um, and Nick and I have talked about this, but um, uh, Poetry is a Naked Person. By oh, nice. Life. Yeah, great choice. Left Life, which, which, which I just found out is also on Criterion tomorrow. <laughs> oh, is so, it coming out again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That awesome. Double bill. I love it. Double bill. That's a pretty good double bill, I would say. Yes, Les Blank's films, <laughs> all of them are big influence. I mean, I'm very happy that we get to have a we get to have a double feature on Criterion with with some Les Blank. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, and no. I still and I still like Nick, un, un, unlike Russell and. <laughs> 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 right, that relationship did not survive to make. No, it, it did not. No, you're absolutely right. But I mean, guys, I mean, I'm so happy you guys are at lunch on Criterion tomorrow, and I mean, I'm so happy to be able to talk to the both of you, and I'm glad I could help uh, in my little small way to spread the dirty gospel and get people to watch this film. Man, it was a lot of fun. But again, thank you both for the time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dave. Really appreciate you helping to spread the dirty gospel. Absolutely. All right. Bye, guys. Talk to you soon. See you, Apostle Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs. <laughs>